This is HTML Fundamentals Part 3. So in this part we're going to look at actually this is HTML Fundamentals Part 3 and in this part we're going to look at actually writing the content for the page. So as we do it we're also going to keep in mind using the semantic tags, meaning the, the semantic meaning for tags, so that we can explain a little bit about what kind of content should go in a tag. And that's really what semantics is about. It's about meaning and, and using the correct tag for the correct kind of content. Where we left off last time in part two was we had a full document uh, without any content. So we basically had our doc type, our HTML tag. Inside of that we had the head tag, which also had the meta and the title tag. And then we had our body. And as it says there, all the visible content is going to go in the body. So what we're going to do here is a little combination of seeing them, typing them into an editor, and, a, and I'll show you a couple things sort of in the wild on a real web page too for a few pieces of it. So again, all of the content elements go inside of the body. So all the stuff we're going to tags uh, we're going to see today, all the elements we're going to see today are ones that should go inside of the body element. So the first ones we're going to look at is we're going to kind of look at the page from the outside in. A lot of times uh, people start with sort of the, the simpler basic tags, but I think in some ways it's easier to start by understanding the bigger structure of the page, because that's often how you think of it first, and then uh, work your way down to the smaller elements. And there'll be one more video in this series where we will take a piece of regular content and figure out how to make it into an HTML page, and that's the, one of the first steps that we're going to do, is group it. So let's move on. So the div. Previously to HTML5, this was really the grouping element that you had. You use the div when you wanted a few different tags, you know, a few different elements to all be grouped together in a logical thing. Uh, oftentimes, you know, it could be your header, it could be a content, it could be a product that had an image and a title and a price and a description, you know, all those things together for one product, you wanted to group it together, you might have a few products on the page. And we often use these groupings uh, with CSS, which we're going to learn next, to style that page and make it look how we want it to look. So one of the other common parts about a div also is that it often has an ID to designate that this is an individual div. So this is something that we haven't talked about much before. The ID attribute is an attribute you can give to an element that gives it a unique name. So you're only supposed to apply an ID to one element on the whole page. Now you can apply it to another page, you can do it again, but on a single page, um, each ID can only be used once. You can use ID with a different value multiple times. So you can say ID equals heading, ID equals you know section, ID equals whatever, footer. Uh, but each one of those would be once. So um, that is one of the ways we did it, and then you can use that to style that one individually later. Uh, you can also use a class, which is the same as this, except instead of the word ID, it would be the word class. And classes you're allowed to use multiple places on the page. And we'll cover that much more when we get into CSS, because this is one of the main ways that HTML and CSS interact. So. With HTML5, we got f four main sectioning elements that help us create sections on the page. And I'm going to explain these a little bit here, uh, and then and two more after this. And then I want to go to a, a web page, and it might be able to help you understand that better. So a section element is essentially saying that this part of the page is its own separate section that's different from the other ones. It could be, um, you can have multiple ones on a page, and in fact, you can even have sections inside of the next element we're going to look at, which is article. Um, so it's just sort of saying this: these things are grouped together in a way where their their meaning, um, they all have a similar meaning. They, they they go towards a common meaning or idea, and it's somewhat generic, uh, but they do have to have that 
similarity. You can't just be, you don't use this if you're just grouping things together visually. So if you want three different things to happen to be all lined up, but they're all separate, you wouldn't use section. That's, that's something you would use div for. Article is a set of content that can kind of exist on its own. It's like its own <clears throat> piece of content. And they often say that you could um, use it uh, the one way to think about it is that it's something that might be self-publishable, or they often say serializable, uh, just meaning you know you could have a feed. So the, the common one to use is a post on a blog, right? So the actual post part of the page where someone's writing their their blog post could be considered an article. Clearly, if you have a magazine, you know there's articles that fits there, but in, in other situations. It's just a piece of content that you could sort of take outside of that context of the page, show it, and people still would um, understand it. Uh, the third one is nav, which is pretty understandable. It's for navigation. This is really only for the major navigation on the page. Um, if it's a you know, smaller side nav or, or um, it doesn't really have to do with the main navigation, uh, you wouldn't use this, but the main navigation on the page uses the nav element. Excuse me. Now, a side is something that can be a little bit uh, tricky too, but a side is something that's related to the main content of the page, but only uh, the word I think they use is tangentially, which really just means it's somewhat related but not fully related. So if you took it out, it's not going to um, take away any meaning from the main part, uh, but it does relate to it. So. Um, one example might be if we go back to that blog post where we had the article, they might have some information about the author of that post that could be put in an aside. You don't have to know who the author is uh, in order to understand the article and read it, but it's some information that's related to it that you could put there. So those are the f four big section elements that create separate sections on the page. And I want to show you t these two more and then we'll look at some uh, real life example of it. Uh, and then types them out ourselves. So here we have a header and footer. So often people think of header and footer as sections of the page, but the way HTML5 describes it is that the header and the footer go within a section. Now often that's the header and footer of the whole page, sort of your body, which is fine. You can have a, a header and a footer for it. But that means each of those uh, other sections, often usually really either the section or the article elements, can have their own header and footer. So you could have three articles on a page, and each article could have its own header and footer as well, as the page itself could have a header and footer. So it's something that um, s when people are first starting out, often the easiest way to do it is to think of it as the entire page, and you have a header at the top and a footer at the bottom. but in terms of the semantics and how you can use it and how you're supposed to use it, you can actually have multiple headers and footers, but they're only per those section and article elements uh, and, and things like that, those other sections that we had before. So let me flip out here to, okay, we've flipped out to an actual page. This is uh, Five Simple Steps. It's a, a publishing company that publishes books about web design. Uh, I'm not, an, endorsing them uh, directly, or at least they're not paying me anything, and they don't even know I exist, most likely. But they write some good books. I've read one of their books on web design. And also, their page is a, is a nice page to be able to look at, to look at how some of these HTML5 and other HTML elements might be used. So as you can see here, one of the first things we'll look at is just sort of take a look at the page and see what we have. So we have their main title here, five simple steps um, on the left, and then they have the navigation over here. Uh, and then we have this current books section uh, that lists some of their current books and uh, bundles. So there's bundles there over. Another one, upcoming books, and our sort of footer stuff at the bottom. So those are the major areas, and then of course in each one there's things that repeat. So obviously in, in the current books and other places you have a book itself, uh, you know, which has the image and the title and the author and the release date and a little description of it. So you all have a, a similar pattern. This is one of the other things that you often want to do when you're designing a page that has something like this is if you have similar content, it should all be styled similarly uh, and laid out so people can see that.
So what I'm going to do is actually um, make this a little smaller. So now it's going to be harder to see the content, but it's really we're not we don't care so much about reading that. What we want to do, I'm going to right click here, and I'm in Google Chrome by the way, and I'm going to go to Inspect Element, and I'm going to move this over. So we're going to take a look at some of the elements that they use for the page. So they have their doc type here, which is a HTML5 doc type. Then they have their HTML element, of course, next. They have a bunch of classes in here, uh, and these classes are you know, related to them styling, which we're not going to go over today. And then they have their head and their body. So I'm going to look quickly uh, in the head just to show, sort of show you there again we have our meta tag with the care set in it. They have a lot of other meta tags there, the title, you know, oh, and the title, sorry, there's the title, Five Simple Steps Books, um, which is, of course, what you see here with the Five Simple Steps Books. That's where the title comes in. And then a bunch of links to their JavaScript and CSS and all those kind of things and the, what their, their, helps them with their shopping and all that stuff. So all those script tags and links go in the head too. And then we have our body. And you notice when I roll over the body, it all turns blue. So remembering all the content on the page, everything you see there, is in the body. All the visible content is in the body. And one of the first things they do, that's a very common thing to do, is to add a div with an ID of wrapper. So oftentimes people want to um, have, let's say, a color or something extend beyond the width of the page, uh, but that, you know, keep a, a centered, narrow page. Putting a div uh, around all of your content is a common way to do that. So this div actually wraps all the rest of the content that we see aside from one thing which is this script element here which is just some more JavaScript. So uh, because it wasn't you know a particular section of a page you know it wasn't all the same content and so forth the div is the right thing to use here and you notice they gave it an ID. So I'm going to expand that and we're going to look down and they have a few big sections here. So they have masthead and you see there that's at the top so this is masthead uh, and then we'll move down to content and so you can see there on the content div it's all most of the rest of the content and uh, I'm going to scroll this page a little bit so that when we roll over the footer div you can see uh, at the at the bottom there you, um, I may have to move this around in the screencast so you can see it but there is the footer as well so we have the three major sections inside this, the head, the content, and the footer. And then we're going to look at how those are broken up. So I'm going to go to the, the back to the masthead quickly here. And so inside of our masthead, they use the header element. Uh, and so the header here wraps around an H group, which is our five simple steps there which you see and an aside so people may or may not I'm gonna, I guess I'll go there so there we go for header which has an age group and a side so the header is saying this is the header of the entire page um, and in our aside there aside remember is something that's sort of related to it and people have somewhat different opinions on it. I, I should have said a little bit more clearly too that while there is an official spec and how you should use section and article and aside uh, and nav there it's still being worked out a little bit about how people practice it but I can see the logic probably that they might have used here is that this aside includes uh, a link to the cart the shopping cart and to the main navigation which aren't technically the main content of this page they are sort of an aside they're they're related to it uh, but they're not uh, needed in order to get the main content of the page out there so that's how they have an aside and of course this is their main navigation so they're using the nav element for their main navigation and another thing in standards design uh, when we design like that is that your navigation should be a list so almost all the time your navigation is a list and an unordered list so you see here that's how it goes so each item in the nav I'll, I'll roll over them and you can see as they hi highlight it there each item in your navigation is a list and then you use CSS later to style that and make it look different and, and do what you want to do so that's their that's their masthead there and a good example of the, the header element and the and the nav and the aside 
And now we're going to go into content. So here's their main content area. And as you saw before, when we looked at their content, they had the current books and the bundles and the upcoming books. So let's see how they did that, see how they might do it. And what they chose here, which is appropriate, is sections. So remember, a section kind of takes related, con you know, a bunch of content that's related under under one item and can bundle that together. Now this isn't really an article per se. Uh, it's not all uh, one idea, uh, you know, sort of one piece of writing that can st stand on its own. Um, so it's you know it's a bunch. There's a bunch of books here. In, in this in this case, there's like eight books um, in this section. And then you have you know your bundles section and your upcoming books section. I'll zoom in a little bit here again so you can see those. So we have section and then current books, bundles, and upcoming books. And the way that they differentiated those so that they could style them if they wanted to differently or do anything, are is they used ID. So they have current books, bundles upcoming books that also match their titles which makes it easier to see later uh, and they also have in some some of those cases a class with them together uh, that class allows you to apply it multiple times on the page so you see the collection class they've used a couple times and as I said we'll get more into classes uh, and other screencasts that have to do with our styles and our style sheets so that's a good example of a use of a, a section uh, to group a bunch of related content together and here we're going to go into our section now has its own title uh, they chose an h4 title here for that uh, for that to say current books and then each of those books is made up of articles so as I roll over these you see each book is an article and they, all those books are articles and they all have the same class applied to them as well uh, so that you could style all of them in the same way so as you see, sometimes this is easier to think of, I hope at least for you, as you sort of move from the outside of the page in. You say, ah, oh, well, I need uh, my header, and I need a, a footer, and I have some content in here, and you're, you're sort of putting it together, and now I need a navigation, and in this case, they need each of their books. So each of those becomes an article, and you could take each of those books and put it somewhere else, and it would make sense on its own, because it's a, an uh, idea about a book. It could, you could see it appearing on Amazon or whatever. Um, so here was an article, and inside of that, they have a paragraph for your image of it. And this is just another thing I wanted to make sure. We're going to see this later, but I'll, I'll bring it up now. Um, that the image itself, I'm going to expand here. That's the IMG element there, um, exists inside of a, lar of a big block element, which is the paragraph. Right? So that they can't just put that image out there. They put a paragraph class their link, that's the A element, and then the image, IMG, in there. Uh, so that's that one. And then they have the next one, which is a div, again, for the book description. So the reason they probably chose this as a div is that they wanted to, to link the title and the author and all those things together as one sort of piece of content to push it separate from that image that was, another par that was in the paragraph that we saw. And so putting it in a div makes sense because it's it's not exactly a section or article one of those other ones in a semantic way you're just really grouping them more for visual purposes um, not for meaning um, and so then a div makes sense to use there that div uh, has the title of the book that's as the h3 uh, has the author there uh, so that's our author paragraph and then the published date uh, and then this paragraph here is the description of it, and at the end they have the uh, the link to view and buy it and so forth. And that same thing is then repeated throughout each one. So you can see it's a good use of section and article as well. So we kind of used all the major HTML5 sectioning elements in addition to the header and the footer as well. Uh, I forgot to let me just show that again just to quickly. Um, so there's the footer again, and that has, you know, some other things inside of it, script, but also the text for your all rights reserved, and another sort of minor navigation at the bottom, privacy refunds, but notice that doesn't have the nav element around it, because it's not the major navigation of the page. So this is sort of a small navigation at the bottom of the page. Um, expand that out. Again though, they use the list, the unordered list, to do the navigation, which you should do for your navigations. Uh, and then it links to each one of those you know, individual items as we go over. 
So that's a good example of a use of these proper semantic big sectioning elements in a real web page. So next we're going to actually let's uh, write a few of those up uh, quickly. Uh, we're not, we're not, I don't want to take too much time to do too many. So I'm going to skip uh, back to our page here. So I might have written in, in my So I might have written the page, you know, I needed a, I might have had a header, uh, and in that I might have had my main title, um, which might be an H1 element, um, the main page title I'll call it, and then I might have had here um, also a footer, you know, at the bottom, um, and I'll just put a paragraph in here footer. All right. I'll tell you this later, that's the copyright symbol there. Um, right, and do something like that. So those are a couple big sections. And then in the middle here, it depends, you know, really what we're, what we're trying to do. Um, I may have had a di just a div um, with content because I may have had a bunch of stuff I wanted to put here um, that I wanted to make sure, <coughs> excuse me, uh, wrapped in a few other things that I was doing. So that might be a place where I might um, put a div over in that case. Uh, and then um, inside of our div we might have had than our sections or articles or things like that. So um, we could have had, um, I'll just quickly do um, a, a couple section. Um, section here with, um, we'll do an H2 and call this posts. Uh, and then I might have had another uh, section and that would have been, and also maybe an H2 that said um, archived posts or something like that. All right, so maybe this was current posts. So we're starting to do that. And then each of those posts could have been an article. And so forth. All right, so, you know, and then in, in that article, I would have had my own set. And you could actually, just to sort of show you what we were talking about before here, I could have actually, uh, I apologize, I have an error up there. I could have had uh, a, a separate header and footer and so forth in here. So you could actually, if you want to, um, put a header in there uh, with a, even its own H1. Right, and then your paragraph tags or so forth. And I would have done something similar for each of the other articles and gone on and, and I could have had the header and you could even add, you know, uh, a footer in the article as well. Uh, and maybe that in the footer you had information about um, that's where you decide to put the author information. Um, so, right, so you could have had that there too. So that's the header, the footer, and then there's of course the article itself, which may have just started out with paragraphs, or could have its own um, titles and so forth. Um, And this might have been what's called a byline, you know, it says, um, or a subheading, too. Uh, so maybe that would actually be more appropriate instead of a paragraph up there. I might have a, a subheading. Yeah. Oops, 
H H three. Sorry. Okay. And why don't we actually open this up too? So as we're going along, we can see how this actually looks in the browser, which is not going to look great now, by the way, because we haven't styled it at all. We're really focusing here on getting the right content in the right tags. So there we go. So we have a main page title, then we have current posts, and then our article title with a subheader and a thing and the article information about it. And then we might have, you know, again, more article titles and archive posts and so forth. So one of the things with the HTML, by the way, as we're writing it now, it's not supposed to look great, but it should at least be somewhat readable, that in terms of the size and the way things the browser is going to render it, you could actually kind of read it and understand the page, even without all the nice CSS that we're going to add later. Okay. Uh, oh, I also forgot uh, I may have had here. For that, I might have added in a nav element. There and remember our navs all get unordered lists. So I'm going to do a little bit of thing here. Um, it's uh, called Zen coding. It lets you uh, write a little bit faster. So it's an unordered list, and inside of that, I want to list items. I'm going to have um, five list items. All right. So that just sort of shows me a, a quick way you can do that. And so this is where you might have it. You know, you can have your home um, and so forth. Um, about uh, and you can you know keep going on and on with your list items, contact, um, archives, something like that. All right, let's take this one out since I can't think of anything else to write there really quickly. So that is my unordered list. Um, remember, on the website at this time it's going to show up as bullet points, but we would use styling later to make that around and make it all nice and and look different there. All right, uh, Zen coding again is something I'm not going to get into now. It's just a quicker way to write HTML since I'm doing it now. You can follow along if you want. You want to pause it because you won't be able to type quite as fast possibly. Uh, but it's more to just show you where things go and how you might add them in. Okay, um, so let's move on to the next section. So I already started doing this a little bit. Um, these are the two types of tags you're going to use most throughout your time writing HTML. P for paragraph. Just a paragraph of text. So you got a block of text. It doesn't have any other particular meaning. It's not a title. It's not a table or a list or anything else that we're going to go over. It's usually a paragraph. And often you'll see it as we saw on the Five Simple Steps site that sometimes when you have a piece of media like an image or something that you need to put somewhere a paragraph tag can be a good place to put that as well. So it, paragraph is sort of your most general purpose uh, tag, that one of the most common ones because most of the web is text and paragraphs of text. And then you have titles. So most sites and pieces of text have a title to go with it to explain what that text is about. And the titles, there are six title tags uh, or heading tags so is, is another way to, to write it. Sometimes it's easier to say heading because there is a separate title element. Um, and the H uh, is a good, you know, one H for heading. So heading one is the largest size that would be rendered by default on a browser. You can change these in CSS to be whatever size you want, um, but it also means it's the most important heading. All right, so H1 means this is the a big important heading. It's the heading for usually for when we went over those sections when you had you know your body sort of counts as a section then you might have an article or or so forth. Uh, each article can have its own H1 but it should only have one in that article you know one for the the main one for the body and so forth. Then you have H2, H3, H4, H5 all the way down to H6. Um, not every website is going to use all six headings levels uh, but they're sort of you know subheadings under that so it means each of the sort of the importance of the headings um, goes down as you go down the list there and we already used a couple of those here uh, so this was our main page title where we had a heading there uh, and then we had our article which we also had a heading which are h1 and an h3 I, I put it in somewhat arbitrary here I it's much better when you actually have real content you can think through and and see where your headings might fit in um, 
and you know here's the heading for the, the posts uh, and then we have our paragraph elements that are just the basic paragraph of the article or here the paragraph for text in the footer and so forth so the other common ones you'll use are block quote and lists so I'm going to start with block quote a little bit. And one of the things people often do wrong with block quote, so in the middle of an article as you're going along, you might decide you want to quote something, and block quote um, is a good way to do that. However, people often start typing things right inside of the block quote, and that's wrong. A block quote is quoting a piece of text, and so that text needs its own element. So uh, the common one here, let me just put a paragraph in, um, is a paragraph. Uh, this is the text of the block quote. And then you can also do, of course, other things here as well, because sometimes you want to have the quote and then who said it and things like that. But this is just the basic styling, the, the minimum that you need when you do add in a block quote. And by default, just to sort of show you uh, the block quote, we'll refresh the page here. And by the way, it's Command R on the Mac, Control R on the PC is refresh. There we have our block quote, which is by default indented in. You can change that or you can add to it and, and, and do other things uh, when you use your CSS. Okay, so the other one is lists. So there's two basic kinds of lists unordered lists and ordered lists. So let's take a look at both of them. We already did a little bit of unordered list there, but just in my article here, I'm going to sort of keep going on and type some more things in my article. So I'm going to use a Zen coding uh, way to make my list item again, um, and this time it's going to be a unordered list as well. We're just going to do three of them. So one, two. Three. And then we'll do the same thing with an OL, an ordered list, one, two, three, and take a look at the difference between those two. So there we go, there's our unordered list, bullet points, ordered list, numbers. All right, and you can change these in unordered lists. You can change them to have different things here, such as um, dashes or stars, or you can even have your own image that you use for that bullet point. In an ordered list, it can be one, two, three, A, B, C, Roman numerals like I, 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 um, and so forth. So you have a, a number of different ways you can style this later with your style sheet. So there's another couple things that have multiple elements, and you know I should mention that you know these are sort of have to go together, right? So we're looking at the lists, the block quote. You can't just sort of put an li tag out there. Uh, you have to have it inside of an order, unordered list or an ordered list. And the same thing, block quote needs something inside of it as well. Um, so the two other most common ones are tables and forms. So uh, let's look at uh, table really quickly. So here we would get our table. All right, and tables get uh, TR elements, and inside those TRs you can have TDs. You can have more than one. And let's put uh, a couple of TDs in here. So cell one, row one, and this is cell two, row one. All right, and then that's so the TR represents a row. And the TD represents a cell, um, and that would be cell 1 in row 2, and cell 2 in row 2. And just take a look at that. And so there we go. There's our table right there. I'm going to leave it at that for now, because really with forms, there's a lot of other stuff that you need to know to be able to properly do a form so we'll just leave it at that but you know you can use forms for a lot of things everything from a you know, simple contact form where someone sends you an email to um, you know sign in forms and login registration and all sorts of stuff uh, so but those all also require a script that processes them 
what uh, we're looking at here is specific content elements. So everything we've looked at before has been what's called a block level element, uh, and these are what's inline. So the other ones create their sort of own blocks of content, and these are little bits of content that go inside of those other blocks, and they're called inline elements. And the first one to look at is one of our most common ones, which is an anchor tag. Um, and it re requires a URL to say, okay, where am I linking to with the content? So let's just do that real quick here. We're going to add another paragraph at the here and add an anchor to it. In the href, I'm just going to do uh, http colon slash slash google dot com uh, link to google. All right, so that's the basic way we do a link there. And I might add another one in there. So let's do an, an A. And just to show you the different kind, it might be a, to a contact page. So you notice on this one I didn't put any HTTP in. And there's two basic uh, kinds of links. Um, one is an absolute URL reference, like this one, that it would be the same exact thing you would type into the browser. The other one is what's called a relative URL, where it just links to another page in your site, and you often just need to make the page name. Depends a little bit on how you've organized your site. We'll talk a little bit more about organization later in the in this one. So we go back here and refresh that, and so there we go. You also notice that the link to Google is a purplish color, while the other one is blue. The purplish means it's a visited link. Uh, you've, already, you've already been there, and the other one is a link that you haven't visited yet. And those are, of course, default colors. You can change that in your CSS. The other thing I wanted to mention about inline elements versus block level elements, so I'm going to paste a bunch more of these in here. And you notice with all the block elements, which include the list items and the titles, um, each element is on its own line, and it pushes in the rest of the content below it. Whereas inline elements, let me refresh this, just go in line with each other until they hit the edge of a page or whatever the width of their containing element is. It means the element they're inside of. In this case, it's a paragraph. And then they go on to the next line and so forth. So that's one of the other big differences between block elements and inline elements. The next inline elements we're going to look at are these emphasis, uh, italic, uh, or I, alternate voice, strong, and B. So it used to be B and I were the first, the only two ones there for sort of bold and italic, but they've kind of moved away from those that they don't have to mean bold and italic um, uh, there. So I'm just going to put a few of these out on the page here. Uh, let's do that in another paragraph. And so uh, this is emphasis text and then this is alternate voice and you'll see this uh, this is um, strong important this is uh, let's make a keyword all right so we're going to look at that on the page. Oops. Here we go. Refresh that. And so you notice that both the EM and the I by default are italic, and the strong and the B are by default bold. Um, you can use these a bit how you will. Uh, the semantics on those aren't uh, completely clear just because of the history of how they've been used. But generally, if something's really important, you would use strong. If you just kind of want to emphasize it a little bit, uh, make sure it's a keyword that people see, you use uh, B. Um, our alternate voice, um, then the normal flow of the text, you know, this is something a little different. You know, Jack thought to himself or something like that, you might put in that. Um, and then uh, our emphasis text, if you want to emphasize something. So. Um, the next one is the sort of generic one you can have for that, uh, which is our span. So I'm not going to show an example of that because really this is mostly used with a style sheet to help you show the emphasis. This here, this text to style, wouldn't look any different than the rest unless I went in and, um, oops, sorry, I clicked that by accident, went in and used CSS to make it look different. The other one I do want to show is the BR tag, uh, and that's used when you want to force a line break. So sometimes you might have um, 
something like that. And then right here, I want to have another line. I don't want it to go, but I want it to be in the same paragraph. Um, like that. All right. So you can just do that. Uh, whoops, let me add another BR here. All right. And those now, if we look at it, refresh here and there we go and so it breaks it onto the new lines but you notice between paragraphs like here and here you have a big white space you know you have a which you should to show the paragraph separation these just have go to the next line all right and then uh, I want to show some media elements so media is how we add media to the page and this is the most common one which is an image it gets a source which says where the image is and alt which is a description of it and I'm gonna go back to um, our books here, and I'm just going to copy the URL for this book just to show you it doesn't the image doesn't have to be one on your page. I'm going to copy that, and just show you how you can how you could use that on your site. So I'll um, let's add a paragraph. So it's an inline element, an image, so it has to go inside a paragraph. And in the source here, we're just going to paste in that link. And then what an alt is is for an alternate description of it. Um, Cover image hard boiled web design. So um, that is what people who couldn't see the image, it w their screen reader would read that out to them and they would know it. Also, a lot of browsers, when you hover the image, it will show that text as well. So you should have that for every image that you have. You want to have a alt text for it. And so there's our image. There are a couple of other a couple of other media elements um, I'm not going to take the time to do because they sort of like form require some other things to help make them you really understand them and make them work properly in the real world one is video so it's a new video element that we have now that can let us add video and even add more than one type of source because different browsers can play different kinds of video so you can upload more than one type and the browser will pick the one it can play and the same for audio very similar to that too so now audio is a native tag in HTML5 as well and the last thing I wanted to talk about was folder structure. So I said before, an example here, um, a few things you want to know. So the first is an index.html is the default page in a folder. So if someone just types the name off of your site, you'll put your home page as index.html. It's important that you say it as index.html. You shouldn't have it as homepage.html or whatever. So that's all, that's one key part. And then you see the other HTML pages are right there. So if I'm linking to another page in my anchor tag, I would just be able to write example.html and it would go to that page. The rest of your content, because remember, HTML is the fundamental part. It's what loads first and everything else loads second. So one way that people often organize the site then is to put all the other content into separate folders. So CSS there would be our casting style sheets. JS is the JavaScript files would go there. Images in the images folder. And all our other media like video and audio or perhaps Flash might go in a media folder. And that way when I, when I reference something from this HTML page, I can, I'll write images slash cat.jpg. So that means there's a I go to the images folder first and then inside of that I would find my cat. So that's it. At this point, you should hopefully have a good understanding of HTML and how to write it and what the meaning is for the most common HTML elements.